before we can dive into bowlins, we have to spend a moment talking about loops. The initial loop of a bowlin is a right-handed loop or right sense loop. It means it turns clockwise as it spirals away from you. To form a loop, we want to twist the cord as if we were unscrewing a screw with a screwdriver and then bring our hands together. It's no worry if the loop forms above or below the line. As long as we twist it the right way, we've got the right loop. Now that we have our loop, we're ready to learn our first tying method. This is the traditional tying method that's usually accompanied by some story about a sailor coming out of a bar or a rabbit coming out of its den. But I like to think of it in terms I can apply to other knots. So once we have our loop, let's think of it in terms of crossings. The working end passes under the loop, and passes over the opposite side, and finally it passes under the standing part before diving back through the loop to finish the knot. When using this method to tie around a post, I find it helpful to bring the loop beyond the post before bringing the working end around to it. After that, it's the same as before. Our next method involves pinching to form the initial loop. When we pinch a loop, we have to turn in the opposite direction from twisting up a loop. So in this case, in order to form our right-handed loop, we're going to twist as if we are tightening with a screwdriver. To tie, we cross the working end over the standing part, twist to form the loop, then take the working end around behind the standing part and back down through the loop to finish the knot. To tie this method around an object, bring the working end around the object and back to the standing part before twisting up and tying as before. Our next tying method involves pulling the bowline out of a simple noose. First we form our right-handed loop and then drape it down and to the left over its standing part. We reach through and pull to form the simple noose. Now with our right hand we bring the working end around to the back of the simple noose and pass it through. We tighten the simple noose down on the working end and as we pull on the standing part we see that the working end is forced through the simple noose as a bite, and that becomes the core of our finished bowlin knot. This method is actually pretty handy to tie around an object since the simple noose stays on one side while the working end passes around and simply comes back and gets pulled through. It helps to leave your noose a little looser than I did here, otherwise it can be a bit of a challenge to pull through. This next method is more about the fun of the hobby of knot tying. I read that you could form a bowline by passing the working end of a marlin spike hitch through the hitch itself. And any old hand could have probably taught me how to do that, but I wanted to figure it out for myself. What I came up with, well, it's certainly not practical. Now, fortunately, I wasn't deterred. And after a few hours of tinkering, this is what I came up with. Much better. Let's look at that again. Right-handed loop drapes down and to the left onto the standing part. We take the working end and insert it into the loop above the standing part. Bring it around, and as soon as we have that pinched in our hand, we can pull on the standing part and the knot forms itself. Finally, to tie that around a post, we simply bring our marlin spike hitch beyond the post, insert the working end, bring it around, pull the standing part, and let her rip. That's all for the bowling. Subscribe for more knots.